Do you trust whether it's the federal government or the city government um, to allow people to maintain their sovereignty while collecting their all of their digital data? Absolutely not. Do you think New York should be a smart city? Definitely not. Yeah, I'm not interested in, in giving up any of my freedoms. They trying to push the boundary of privacy and just trying to invade people's space, mm -hmm. you know, and it just feels very unsafe. I'm Jeremy Lofredo for Rebel News in New York City. The global ruling class is aiming to reimagine cities as we know them. Whether it's working to fight climate change through mass dietary and energy restructuring or making city governance more efficient and smart by combining big data analytics, telehealth, geospatial tracking, psychological and physiological monitoring, and individual resource usage in some of the world's largest cities, including here in New York. The result will transform our cities into concrete total digital surveillance regions. They call these areas smart cities. Smart cities are described by elite think tanks like the World Economic Forum as the next generation of urban living. Smart cities are urban centers that will gather, analyze, organize, and make decisions using the digital information of millions of internet-connected sensors, devices, and objects. From smart vehicles, water electricity sensors, to waste bin containers, to smart home security systems, to smart wearable devices like Fitbits, to smartphones, to internet-connected home appliances like refrigerators, to smart sensor-embedded clothing, even to forthcoming implantable devices inside people themselves. All of these sensors and devices are and will be constantly emitting wireless data. It will be mined and fed to the authorities, which is supposedly going to help run our cities more efficiently, giving the term urban planning a new sinister meaning. This network of millions of internet connected devices and objects and sensors monitoring everything is the backbone of the smart city, and it's known as the Internet of Things, or IoT. As Klaus Schwab wrote about the Internet of Things in his book Shaping the Future of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, in the next decade, more than 80 billion connected devices around the world be in constant communication with people and with each other. Schwab explains that the Internet of Things consists of a range of smart and connected sensors that gather data, process, and transform them according to need. It then communicates data to other devices or individuals to meet the goals of a system. He says that smart cities will make us, meaning them, more conscious of the value of digital data. Schwab writes that in its simplest form, the Internet of Things can be described as a relationship between products, services, places, and people that is made possible by connected wireless technologies and sensors. And the World Economic Forum isn't just philosophizing and pontificating. They're funding a handful of global public-private initiatives involving some of the most powerful companies on the earth, with the express purpose of bringing smart cities to urban areas all over the world. The World Economic Forum's strategic partners, which chiefly include those in the fields of big tech, pharma, green tech, and digital banking, have a lot to gain from the introduction of smart cities and the Internet of Things, or in layman's terms, a lot to gain from hooking everyone and everything up to the grid. One group the World Economic Forum has organized to push the agenda of smart cities is the G20 Global Smart Cities Alliance, an alliance which aims to quote, establish and advance global policy norms to help accelerate the best practices in relation to smart city technology, and has policy nodes in some of the world's biggest and most influential countries. The World Economic Forum is the secretariat of the alliance, and it's partnered with Microsoft, Google's parent company Alphabet, and tech cloud behemoth Amazon. As they say, data is the new oil, and the tech oligarchs will get exponentially more data by collecting it all from everyone and everything, as smart cities will facilitate. As Klaus Schwab writes, there's a wealth of information that can be gathered from wearable devices and implantable technologies. Here's the Nokia CEO at the World Economic Forum explaining that smartphone tech, meaning the ability to wirelessly communicate, take photos, and use GPS technology, will almost certainly be implanted in people in the coming years. So around 20, 2030, I would say that by then, Definitely the smartphone as we know it today will not anymore be, be the usual kind of the most common interface. Wow. This, this, many of these things will be built directly into our, our, our bodies. And here's the World Economic Forum's Yuval Noah Harari explaining how wearable technology will help better manage our city's health systems by sharing our health data. He says in many cases, we won't have a choice. Do you give access to what is happening inside your body and brain in exchange for far better health care? And my guess is that health will win, hands down. People will give up their privacy in exchange for health care, and maybe in many places they won't have a choice. He also explained how city authorities monitoring wearable technology with biosensors can help spot dissidents. Everybody has to wear a biometric bracelet which constantly monitors your blood pressure, your heart rate, your brain activity 24 hours a day. You listen to a speech on the radio by the great leader, and they know what you actually feel. You can clap your hands and smile, but if you're angry, they know you'll be in the gulag tomorrow morning. 
and technology similar to this is already becoming available. For example, Amazon's Halo, a smart wristband, it can scan the user's body and voice, monitor blood pressure, and is meant to report back on your emotional state throughout the day. Regarding smart cities, Schwab writes that public crime is likely to decrease due to the convergence of sensors, cameras, AI, and facial recognition technology, signaling that smart cities will grossly inflate the bureaucratic police state and violate civil liberties. 5G, the next generation of wireless technology, will be the tech that facilitates the connection of everything. 5G will upgrade the human experience at home and across industries as we connect virtually everything. Here's Tom Wheeler, the former chair of the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, talking about 5G and the structure of the Internet of Things. Yes, 5G will connect the Internet of Everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. But with the predictions of hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers, you can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet to be imagined. Former CIA director David Petraeus admitted in a summit hosted by Incutel, the CIA's venture capital firm, that the CIA was eager to use these smart devices in smart cities to facilitate spying. Quote, items of interest will be located, identified, monitored, and remotely controlled through technologies such as sensor networks, tiny embedded servers, and energy harvesters, all connected to the next generation internet using abundant, low-cost, high-power computing. And James Clapper, former director of U.S. national intelligence turned CNN contributor, echoed the intelligence apparatus's aim to use these smart technologies for spying in a Senate Intelligence Committee hearing, saying that, in the future, intelligence services might use the Internet of Things for identification, surveillance, monitoring, location tracking, and targeting for recruitment or to gain access to networks or user credentials. Before the pandemic, Sidewalk Labs, a smart city subsidiary of Google, attempted to make a smart city alongside Toronto's waterfront, Keyside. Cities use data every day. Everything from showing you when your next train will arrive to measuring the air quality in different neighborhoods. Typically, all this information is spread out across a ton of different agencies and companies in a bunch of different file formats and spreadsheets. But at Keyside, we have the chance to start from scratch and build a single unified digital platform that's transparent, open, and accessible for everyone working to make our cities better. There was tons of public backlash, and Canadians raised concerns about the project's privacy implications, and Google's promise to reimagine Toronto from the internet up. As Surface Magazine reported, the proposed smart city painted a grim picture of a company galvanizing economic development for the benefit of Silicon Valley rather than Canada. The leaders behind Toronto's first data-driven smart city are under fire tonight after yet another resignation. This time, a member of Waterfront Toronto's digital advisory panel quit and wrote a strongly worded letter on her way out, sharing her deep concerns about privacy and data control. I want to get some feedback now from the former Information and Privacy Commissioner from the province of Ontario, who, when last you were here discussing this very topic, you were kind of uh, bullish about it. And then I just couldn't happen but help notice that you've resigned from your involvement in all this. What happened? And I, did, I didn't do it lightly. I wanted to draw attention to the fact that we had to make sure that all the personal data that was being collected automatically by the sensors and other technologies were de-identified at source, anonymized at source. De-identified me meaning? Meaning no personal identifiers. You wouldn't know it's Ann Kavukian walking or you or, or the, this is my car or anything. And the reason that was critical is unlike most uses of what I call operational data, where the individual, the data subject, can exercise some control over the use, the operation of that data. They can consent to it. They can revoke consent. They can choose not to consent. They have some sense of control. Mm -hmm. With the data here, you have no control. It's all being collected automatically with the emerging technology sensors all picking up data. Ultimately, the smart city failed to come to fruition, officially because of economic and supply chain issues stemming from COVID, but the idea of an entirely connected smart city lives on. Bill Gates, the largest barren landowner in the United States, second only to the federal government, is building a smart city. As we enter what Klaus Schwab calls the fourth industrial revolution, an era which he explains the coming technology will blur the distinction between the physical, digital, and biological spheres, it creates extraordinary implications for freedom and privacy, issues in which we're just beginning to see play out in real life. At the time of the Keysight announcement, former Google chairman and CEO Eric Schmidt said the idea had come from Google's founders getting excited, thinking of all of the things we can do if someone just gave us a city and put us in charge. 
Now New York is reportedly leading the way on its plan and implementation of smart city technology, or as they put it, integrating technology into every aspect of civic life. And it's that man and company, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, that's been officially tapped by the government to reimagine New York. History does show that people are ready for change at certain moments. Uh, and I believe this is one of those moments. How do we really use new technology in the economy of tomorrow? Uh, and that's the lesson that we're all learning, right? Work from home, telemedicine, teleeducation. It's all about technology. Probably the best mind uh, in this country, if not in this on the globe, to do this uh, is, uh, I believe, a, a true visionary, especially in the field of technology. And that's Eric Schmidt. Uh, who was uh, former CEO of Google, obviously. In March of 2021, former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced the action plan for a reimagined New York. The reimagined New York chair is Eric Schmidt. And the co-chair is Toyin Ajay, the president of CityBlock, a sister organization of Sidewalk Labs, the Google company that tried and failed to make Toronto a smart city. Following the promise to make New York City smart, this month the city announced that they're doing away with a subway ticketing system that the city has been successfully using for decades. As a New Yorker, I can attest... It works without a glitch. The city is replacing this legacy system with a new contactless, touchless, digital system. No more cash, no more anonymity. Only smartphones, digital wallets, and bank cards. The company taking over the city's transportation system is called Cubic. Cubic is a World Economic Forum connected corporation that specializes in 21st century transportation systems and also military technology, including surveillance and reconnaissance communications equipment. Do New Yorkers want their city to become smart? Do they see more surveillance and digital tech in the city as harmful or helpful? Do they care if their wearables, their phones, their household appliances are monitored for the supposed good of the city? Um, I de definitely think it'll be more nefarious. I mean, we're like going down the road of China when you're talking about that. Um, and that's a very oppressive system. And they basically watch everybody. And ever since Corona, it's even gotten worse. So no, I do not agree with it. I think it's a horrible idea. It'll be good for the New York economy, but I think it'll be bad for the New Yorker. It just becomes like much, much harder to survive if you're constantly being um, babysat and policed. Like I saw that they were going to take out Metro cars and they're going to replace everything with like mm -hmm. tap credit. Like I will never do that. It feels too tapped in. If you're keeping tabs on everybody, then you're in a sense like so you're pre-policing, yeah. you know, because it's like you're going to have that data for when you want it. They trying to push the boundary of privacy and just trying to invade people's space, mm. you know, and just feels very unsafe. I think it depends because mm -hmm. it's a tool. Mm -hmm. How are you going to use the tool and who's creating the tool? Do you trust whether it's the federal government or the city government um, to allow people to maintain their sovereignty while collecting their all of their digital data? Absolutely not. Do you think New York should be a smart city? Definitely not. Yeah, I'm not interested in, in giving up any of my freedoms. Technology and the way they're talking about, they make it sound like good. But it's really, you're not going to get anywhere with that. Like, and it's just going to affect marginalized people mm -hmm. so much more. Like social credit score and shit, like just like all that, like that's just the demise mm -hmm. of humani just, uh, humanity. Like that's just like more control because like the more like tapped in you are to shit, like your phone is like, is too much like you trust the the federal or the city authorities in allowing you to keep your sovereignty while also taking all your data that question doesn't even make sense like that's not even a question <laughs> you can't have a sovereignty with your data being stolen exactly. for rebel news in new york city i'm jeremy lafredo if you don't think the corrupt who should be exercising its power over supposedly sovereign nations, go to nopandemictreaty.com and sign our petition. That's no pandemic treaty.